were asked which sets below form a basis for R3, there may be more than one answer. A set of vectors S in a vector space V is a basis for V if the set S is independent and the set S spans V. In our case, notice how each set contains three vectors in R3, which means in order for the vectors to be a basis for R3 and span all of R3, the set of vectors must be linearly independent. To see if these sets are linearly independent, we set up and solve the vector equation shown here below. If the solution is only the trivial solution, then the set of vectors is independent and does form a basis for R3. If there are non-trivial solutions, then the set of vectors is linearly dependent, and because we only have three vectors in the set, they do not form a basis for R3. So let's take the first set and set up the vector equation. I've already done most of the work here. We have C sub one times the first vector, plus C sub two times the second vector, plus C sub three times the third vector equals a zero vector. From here we can set up a system of equations, or go straight to the augmented matrix, which I've done here below, where the first row is negative one, three, eight, zero, the second row is zero, one, three, zero, and the third row is negative one, six, seventeen, zero. I've also already written the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which is here on the right. Let's go ahead and label the columns with the variables C sub one through C sub three. Notice how we do have a row of zeros along the bottom, which indicates we have an infinite number of solutions, and therefore the set of vectors is going to be linearly dependent and will not be a basis for R3. But let's go ahead and show a little more work. We know from the first row, C sub one plus C sub three equals zero. The second row indicates that C sub two plus three C sub three equals zero. If we identify the pivots, we can see that C sub one and C sub two are the basic variables, and C sub three is a free variable, which indicates C sub three can be equal to any real number C sub three. So again, we can see we have an infinite number of solutions, not just the trivial solution, and therefore the set of vectors is linearly dependent and is not a basis for R3. Now let's move to the second set of vectors. Again, with the same setup, we have the vector equation, the corresponding augmented matrix, and then the augmented matrix written in reduced row echelon form. Notice here we don't have a row of zeros, and again, if we label the columns, C sub one through C sub three, the first row indicates that C sub one equals zero, the second row indicates that C sub two equals zero, and the third row indicates that C sub three is equal to zero. We only have the trivial solution, and therefore the set of vectors is linearly independent and does form a basis for R3. And now let's take a look at the last set of vectors. Again, we have our vector equation, the corresponding augmented matrix, and then the augmented matrix written in reduced row echelon form. And we can quickly see that we only have the trivial solution where C sub one equals zero, C sub two equals zero, and C sub three equals zero. This indicates the set of vectors is linearly independent. And since we have three vectors in R3, these vectors must span R3 and form a basis for R3. Going back to the original problem, the second two sets of vectors are linearly independent and do form a basis for R3. I hope you found this helpful.